Robert Plank Show, Episode 367, ACX Audiobook Narration. Create your audiobook, outsource it, or partner with a narrator and market the dang thing with audiobook consultant Richard Riemann. Hey everyone, and thanks for listening. We're talking right now with Richard Riemann, and Richard is an audiobook self-publishing expert, and his website is at rrvoice.com, and he's an Audible-approved producer, which is an honor given to the top 10% of Audible narrators, and Richard also produces audiobooks for authors voicing their own audiobooks and consults authors and independent book publishers on audiobook production. So lots of fun stuff to talk about today. Glad to be talking to you, Mr. Richard. Thank you, Robert. Great to be here. I'm glad to have you. And so I have to admit, uh, I, I don't know too much about this audiobook stuff. Like I have some of my own uh, Kindle books. I've narrated two audiobooks on ACX, but I know that I just used you know, homemade equipment. I know I kind of just winged it. Uh, and, and I've got a handful of sales, but you know, looking to get more audiobooks made, looking to up my game, looking for more sales. I'm sure lots of people listening are looking for the same thing. So can you kind of tell us in your own words, like what this whole like Amazon audiobook thing's all about? Yes. Five years ago, Amazon decided to get into the audiobook business and created the audiobook creation exchange, acx.com, which is a way for self-published authors to create their own audiobooks or find a narrator. They have actually thousands of narrators available to choose from if you put your book up for, uh, for uh, auditions, uh, mainly fiction. Um, if you've written nonfiction, a lot of times you want to be the voice of your own work. But ACX uh, offers a couple of opportunities to make money. You can go in with no cost up front, sharing royalties with someone, or you can basically pay a narrator by the per finished hour. It takes roughly six hours to complete one hour of, of audio on a book. So there are many ways to do it, but what they don't help you with is promoting your audio book. And that's where I help authors a lot. Super cool. So, so lots of fun stuff to unpack here. And it sounds like there's money to be made kind of on, on both ends, right? Like I know that uh, you, I, I looked at your website and your bio real quick and I saw that uh, you've worked with Bill DeWeese and, and uh, me and my business partner work with him and we think he's a great guy. So it sounds like there's a way for some of these narrators to kind of make some money uh, by being the narrator part. But then there's also on the side of the author part, if you say, well, I have a book, uh, either I want to, like you said, narrate it myself or pay a narrator up front to narrate it, or kind of split the profits. And so is that about right? Like there's all kinds of money to be made in all kinds of different ways here. Yes, that's absolutely correct. And, you know, right now, audiobooks, it's the golden age of audiobooks. Uh, the technology is headed in the direction of people listening on their phones, smart cars having audiobook apps, people listening on on the Echo devices, um, the latest survey was 16% of people are listening to audiobooks on their Echo. So all of the, the uh, technology is headed in the direction of more audiobook popularity. So it's, uh, it's a great time to jump into the audiobook business. Super cool. I, and yeah, like I, I've noticed that uh, I didn't know that you could uh, play a book on your audiobook, but I've noticed that I always have my phone loaded up with something in case I'm, you know, walking or I'm driving or I don't want to play around with, uh, you know, finding some radio station. I'd rather just put it on a book. And it's so great that the the prices of these audiobooks has really dropped as well. Like, you know, a, a Kindle book now is a dollar, five dollars. Uh, I have a subscription to Audible, 15 bucks a month, and I just get, uh, you know, some new audiobook now, which used to cost, you know, 50, 60 dollars. You'd have to get those cassettes or those CDs, and now it's just pay the money, dial into your phone, listen, pick up where you left off. Uh, really, really great stuff. And so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it's like sometimes you mention audiobooks, and at first you think like, oh, that seems kind of out of date, but with all this new uh, kind of technology, it seems like audiobooks are sort of back or, or growing even. Yeah, Edison Research uh, said something interesting, which was podcasts are the gateway drug to audiobooks. Uh, bottom line is people listening to podcasts are switching over to audiobooks. I had a teenager tell me, oh, yeah, audiobooks, those are the long podcasts. And I said, oh, yeah, that's uh, that's exactly right. Um, so the, the fastest growing demographic for audiobooks is 18 to 24, uh, which is amazing. Um, and that is why young adult 
as a genre is also growing rapidly in popularity for audiobooks. Awesome. I noticed that too, that like, I think at first I loaded up the, uh, you know, the iPhone with a bunch of audio or podcast episodes and it was okay, but I felt like I was always kind of switching back and forth or I wouldn't get the uh, complete picture or maybe the host of the show kept on kind of revisiting the same topics. And for a lot of these podcasts I listen to, I'm like, well, let me just go and buy their, their audio book because I know that's like the more polished material. That's more of their best stuff. And it's only a couple dollars. And the next thing I know, I keep buying like thing after thing after thing. Uh, and it all started because I listened, like you said, I listened to the podcast and it led to the, those audiobooks. So, I mean, this all sounds great, uh, but if someone out there, uh, well, first of all, because I kind of want to talk about if someone, you know, has a book and they want to get an audiobook made. But first of all, is my understanding correct that uh, if someone out there, if they say, well, I want an audiobook, they have to have a, a print or a Kindle book first. Is that correct? On Amazon, that is correct. If you're going to use acx.com, you have to have either at least an ebook or have your book, um, you know, in pre sale mode. And you can get started either way that way, but there has to be something to tie it to. It's the first question that you're asked on ACX is, is this your book? And they tie it to your book and your Amazon book page. But there's a way around that. If you go to other publishers, um, listen to a book, listen number two, a book, um, Authors Republic, uh, Find Away Voices is a new one that just uh, came on the landscape. You can create an audiobook without necessarily having an ebook or paperback uh, to tie it to. Okay, great. I mean, I, I didn't uh, know that. So, Authors Republic, and then what was the other new one? List, well, the, the new one is Find Away Voices, um, and it's, uh, it, it basically is a new player as of this month uh, trying to be a competitor to ACX. So it's an interesting, uh, interesting concept. And I work with Stephen J. Cohen, who runs listentoabook.com, and they offer very much flexibility, especially for fiction authors who want co-narrators or have some special, you know, three-way split of, of royalties. Um, but it also gets you not just on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes, which is where you go if you're through ACX exclusively. If you go non-exclusive on those platforms, you can be in 35 different places, including libraries, including Overdrive, where you can get uh, audiobooks through your through your libraries, Nook, um, many um, uh, distributors like Audiobooks.com. So you know you have to open up the possibility of of not going just through ACX.com, but going through through some of these other publishers and distributors uh, to get your audiobook uh, out there to more places. So when you do your, uh, your your coaching and advising of these people looking to make audiobooks, do you recommend that they use these other services instead of ACX or ACX first and then branch out or like what what's your preference usually? Well, AD, ACX is the 800 pound gorilla for independently published authors right now. They really make it easy to create things and you you don't have to bring them already recorded files. And you are, um, that's the place to get the most opportunity to find a narrator. Um, but in certain circumstances, if you want to sell internationally, even though Amazon just opened up uh, ACX sales to uh, not just Great Britain and the US, but also Ireland and Australia, uh, at least sales are going there. But if you want to sell in South America, you want to sell in the rest of Europe, that type of thing, you're going to have to go outside of ACX.com. If you want to put it on CD, and a lot of people still do, especially public speakers who at their appearances want to sell CDs of their book in the back of the room, uh, you have to go uh, beyond exclusively with ACX. You have to use the non-exclusive option. Fair enough. And then so uh, so are people able to kind of start with ACX if they just want to get a handle on things and then branch out to these other places? Um, 
If it's one book, you're actually signing a seven-year agreement is the standard agreement with ACX. So you're kind of stuck with them uh, for your book if you go that way. Um, they, uh, you know, that's a, that's a pretty long obligation, but that's what they ask. Um, so if you go through ACX, though, and go with the non-exclusive option, that gives you much more flexibility to sell your audiobook other places. Uh, but ACX is a good place to start, especially if you're going to do it yourself. I mean, a lot of authors of their own, you know, works that it may not be a long book, it may not be a bestseller, but they do want to get it into audio uh, using home equipment, uh, as you were talking about, ACX is still the best way to go. Okay, great. And I, did, I didn't even know that there was a, an exclusive or a non-exclusive option with, with ACX, so that's good to know. And so uh, so if, if people are kind of looking and they say, okay, well, I want uh, an audiobook made and either I'll, I'll go to one of these places or I'll use ACX. Uh, so so you, you mentioned, or we, we both mentioned the, that there's the option for people to record it themselves, especially if they just want something quick, if they want something short. And so uh, kind of if someone was looking to record an audiobook themselves, what do you recommend they do as far as uh, equipment and as far as like things they learn or steps they take? Yeah, the, it's a challenge. It's a marathon. Um, and uh, uh, my fellow narrator, Sean Allen Pratt, has a video about do you really want to be uh, an audiobook narrator? Uh, lock yourself in the closet and read your book out loud for two hours straight and record yourself and, and listen to it back. And do you really want that to be the voice of, of your audiobook? And you will find out quickly that it's more than just having a decent microphone, which it is, like a decent USB microphone, uh, AT2020 Plus, for instance, rather than using um, a phone, you know, uh, micro a cell phone microphone or uh, using the, the built-in microphone in your computer, that type of thing. It just won't cut it for something that people want to listen to for hours. The challenge, Robert, is the editing part, because as you make mistakes, you know, and going back and forth and recording, you obviously need some software to record into. Audacity at audacity.com is a free program you can use to record, and it's not that complicated. It's fairly simple. Um, but it's the editing part that gets most people uh, editing out very loud breaths, editing out mistakes. Little tip. Use a dog clicker uh, if you make a mistake. That'll put a spike in the audio, and you'll be able to go back and, and edit out the bad takes. Um, but you can also hire an audiobook editor, and normally it's like $70 per finished hour. Now, an hour is about 9,300 words, so just to calculate it. So um, if you pay a professional to edit it, uh, and maybe master it for you to meet the specifications, it has to be a certain loudness. It has to be uh, uh, a certain, you know, uh, half second to a second of room tone before your chapter, three seconds or more of room tone after each chapter. So there are very, some, some very specific things. Can you learn it yourself? Absolutely. In fact, I dedicated a chapter in my book the Author's Guide to Audiobook Creation, um, to how to do it yourself, and also, you know, the, the 15 different steps you take to get your book on ACX. Awesome. And I want to make sure, like, I, I'll be asking for your uh, your websites again at the end, but can you let us know as we're still listening here where people can grab that book you mentioned, The Author's Guide to Audiobook Creation? Right. That's, uh, that's available on Amazon. Um, it is available in all ebook, uh, paperback, and audiobook formats. Um, and it actually won the 2016 award in writing and publishing, the Global Media Award, uh, National Award. So I'm very proud of that. I interviewed some of the top narrators in the business because my background being in, in radio news, I use that as a journalist to gather the information and say to authors, okay, here are all the basics. And, uh, you know, you can pick that book up. Uh, the ebook I think, is like $6 or something um, to, uh, to really jump in and learn the basics. 
Super cool. So to get those basics, just uh, I'll go on Amazon, search the author's guide to audiobook creation. And I'm glad that you mentioned in there, Mr. Richard, that uh, there's also an audiobook form because I better, you better hope so, right? Like if you're talking audiobooks, better have a, an audiobook yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, I decided to hire myself to narrate it. So <laughs> well, the well, audiobook's done well too. Well, great. Maybe you can write it off or something. Well, well cool. And that's that's good to know that it's not you're not just stuck between the options that people give you, right? Like there's there's ACX, there's other places. Uh, there's the you can uh, record it yourself and even if you don't want to learn all those ACX specifications that's great that you can hire an editor uh, for about seventy dollars per finished hour to clean it up to master it and I, I imagine that um, it, I imagine that there's a way to like talk with one of these editors first and give them like a clip right because I, I imagine that if you're not careful and you don't know enough about audio you might record like a bad recording that can't even be salvageable by an editor is that right that's exactly right yeah you want to give about five minutes of audio to an editor just to see what they do with it get their feedback on you know uh, are you addressing the microphone properly are you know are you close enough or are you popping your peas and and all those technical things um, and you can find you know audiobook editors uh, by you know just searching by by googling or you know, I work with authors every day, and I'd be happy to to send anyone uh, a list of uh, potential audiobook editors. Awesome! And, and as you guys are listening, uh, you can go to rrvoice.com, and there's a link on the side where this is contact Richard. So if you'd like Richard to uh, to send you off to one of these great people that can edit for you, uh, reach out to him. And then, like we said, if you can get like a five minute or so clip recorded, so that way, uh, whatever editor you end up hooking up with, you pay them a little bit of money to do this sort of coaching. Uh, they they listen to what you have, and they listen. Well, is the audio quality good? Are you addressing the microphone properly? All that fun stuff. And so. Uh, so the, the next thing that, that I, I've always wanted to know about ACX, Mr. Richard, but I've always been sort of, I don't know, afraid to try it myself, is this whole idea of uh, passing it off to an existing narrator because I like that Amazon gives you the options, right? You can pay a few hundred dollars to just pay them off. You can uh, sort of do a revenue split. And I believe, if I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there's a way to kind of hybrid the two, right? Like you can pay someone up front and then also split on top of that. Is that right? Absolutely. And I wrote uh, an article, uh, a blog recently on the pricing, what it costs in terms of, you know, what authors can understand. Basically, it starts at about $10,000 per $10, excuse me, $10 per 1,000 words. The most expensive narrators, the real professional ones, are more in the $30 per 1,000 words range. And yes, you can set up a royalty split, as they call it, royalty share. Uh, you can pay them directly 50% uh, up front, 50% at the end. Um, you, there are several different ways to, uh, to hire a good, experienced narrator. And is there a, a best way to do it, or is there one of your favorites? Because I, I don't know, like when I when I kind of look at those possibilities, my my inner doubter sort of says, well, if I if I post an existing book I have for narration on ACX, uh, I imagine that I might get people, and, and if it's revenue only. I, just my my thinking is that maybe a lot of people will uh, be bad quality or I'll have difficulty getting people to audition because I'd, I'm not like a super duper huge bestseller. Uh, and so am I am I right there? Am I wrong there? I mean, what's sort of the situation as far as like the best kind of choice to choose here? You're absolutely right. The most experienced narrators look at royalty share as they're doing all the work up front. They're putting, you know, hours and hours. I mean, they can put a 40 hours into a book in recording, editing, mastering, that type of thing without any return at all. They're basically hoping this book will start selling. So they look carefully for existing sales, uh, whether the author has a fan base following, um, whether they've done more than one book, all of those factors. So the people you'll probably get if you go royalty share only will be less experienced, uh, just looking to get some books under their belt, or people who like the subject in particular. And, you know, a, do a book about dog care and they love dogs. Um, may do a royalty share title just for that reason. But if you're willing to pay 
at least $100 per finished hour, and that's at the $10 per 1,000 words rate. If you're willing to pay at least that, you can get a more experienced narrator. For the best narrators now, you are really talking about the range of $30 per 1,000 words, and for that, you will get a book that sounds just as good as those produced by Random House and all of the major publishers. Super cool, and I, I'm super shocked at uh, at some of the, this pricing as far as how low it is. Because I thought in my head that uh, if I were to go out and get like a super fancy professional narrator, it might cost you know thousands and thousands of dollars. But if we're talking about a, about a book that's just you know ten thousand words, three thousand words, I mean we're just talking about uh, you know a, a few hundred dollars here on the low end, and then maybe even a thousand dollars or two on the high end. So it just seems uh, a lot cheaper than uh, the than what I was expecting and then so as far as uh, you know getting paid and stuff what I've what I've heard but not seen a lot of is that Amazon handles everything is that right like if you use ACX and the money comes in they just split it you don't have to do any kind of paying them or waiting them to pay you it just kind of gets split by Amazon themselves exactly that's what's great about it is they handle any royalty share split uh, you get paid every month direct deposit in the bank account that you set up uh, so there's no heavy lifting at all once the book is up and up for sale um, you know you just wait for for the uh, the payments to come in if you promote it and that is the key just doing an audiobook and putting it up there is not going to get you anywhere you need to use the 25 gift codes Audible gives you for every audiobook um, to get reviews, for instance. And you get paid if somebody downloads your book using one of those gift codes. You need to go to places that on, online that promote your genre. Like, uh, you know, if, you, if it's science fiction, you go to audiobookreviewer.com, which specializes in sci-fi, thrillers, and fantasy. You get the word out there in Facebook author groups uh, that your audiobook is now available, and you treat it like a new baby. You let everybody on your mailing list know you now have a new version of your book, and that's how you get sales going. Great stuff, and, and that's uh, like a, a repeat lesson I keep hearing from from your advice here. Is it's it sounds to me like a lot of these authors they just upload something and then kind of just let it sit there. And, and from what you've been saying, it sounds like it's so so important to do everything you can to mark your book from like you said the Facebook groups, email your list, uh, go to some of these uh, review sites, or even look at what other authors are doing in your same genre, and just kind of get. Uh, get in front of those sorts of people because uh, if if you put out a book and it, you don't promote it, it's a dud. It looks like you don't make any sales. Then when it comes time to get the audiobook made, everyone will see, oh, well, this person they don't take their their publishing business seriously. They don't promote their own stuff, or maybe their book sucks because no one's buying or reading or reviewing it. Uh, and so it it just sounds like uh, this is such an important lesson for every author out there to keep on marketing their own stuff. So that way uh, that way they'll they'll pick up speed and it'll be easier to to sell books and do all these things in the future. Yes, yes. Marketing really is the key. Uh, and, and it's a great opportunity with audiobooks to actually create a, a new version of an older book you may have done a few years ago. Get it out as an audiobook and announce it again, and you'd be surprised your old book might start selling too because of the marketing you're doing for the audiobook. Man, that's a really good idea, and I should even look into some of my older stuff where I've been sort of afraid to promote it. I can just go back, get the audio audiobook made, and that's a reason to uh, kind of spruce things up and, and to, to give it some new life. So sort of as we're uh, winding things down here, in all your travels, in all these you know years and years of, of audio stuff and doing audiobooks and uh, you know advising people and things like that, have you seen like a huge number one mistake that all these authors are making as far as getting their audiobooks out there? Yeah, and we've already discussed it, which is not promoting the audiobook once it's up there. Um, that really is, is the biggest mistake. The second mistake is thinking you can just get away with a poor quality recording. Um, you know, people are listening in headphones or in a noisy car. And if it's not a good recording, uh, it's a bad reflection. You're going to get bad reviews on your Amazon page, and you don't want that. So go for quality. 
and also realize that audiobooks are, you know, if you're going to do a, a, a book you're proud of and an ebook, do the audiobook too, because it really makes you look like a professional author on your Amazon page. And, you know, the best way to sell an audiobook is to do another audiobook. As they say, you know, do a series of books. It is true, is, you know, do as many as you can to establish yourself as an established author of, of audiobooks, and you will start to get a following. Uh, that is super great advice, I think, and, and I love it. And I think that everyone out there, uh, if you don't have a book, you should have a book. If you have a book and you don't have an audiobook, you should have an audiobook. And, uh, you know, in this day and age, the equipment is cheaper than it's ever been. And there's still some sort of a technical learning curve. But if you ever get stuck, find a course, find a coach, find someone to guide you. And just the, the, the two things that I'm picking up from this is that, like, like we both said, market the heck out of your books. But also, when it comes to hiring someone for a little job, uh, you don't have to just go all in. You could like we, you could hire the narrator uh, full speed, or you could narrate yourself and then hire this editor to clean it up. So it, you don't have to just throw a bunch of money at the problem. And even if you do, what I'm hearing is that the cost is in the hundreds of dollars, not in the thousands, not in the tens of thousands. And then you put a little bit of money in there, get your audiobook made, you promote the heck out of it, and then if you like the results you see from that, then make more books, make more audiobooks, do everything you can to get that traffic, to get yourself noticed, especially in this day and age uh, where things are so crowded things move so fast there are so many competitors out there why not have that extra uh, you know one up of, on your own business that most people don't have which is an audiobook in addition to your book and so uh, I want to make sure mr. Richard that everyone knows everything that there is about you I want to make sure I know about your books your websites anything you have going on so if they listen to our conversation today and they say man this Richard guy he knows his stuff I want to go out there and buy everything he has I want to contact him where should people go to find out more about you Okay, a few different places. You can email me directly at richard at rrvoice.com. That's the easiest thing. And my website is rrvoice.com um, for, for my narrations and my business. Uh, I also do audiobook consulting, specifically personal consulting, what it will take for your book, what kind of equipment you would need, whether you should get a narrator, that type of thing. And that site is audiobookconsult.com. You can sign up for um, a consulting half hour or hour uh, right there, and we can set up a time, schedule a time for us to talk very specifically about how you can do an audio book from your book. I love it. So if you're listening, uh, make sure that you've written down those websites and make sure you, you visit at least one of those websites, even for a few minutes, just to kind of see what's out there. So rrvoice.com, Richard at rrvoice.com and audiobookconsult.com. And I mean, there's just thinking back to different times when either I found myself, I got too frustrated with some project or some new technology I was working on. Many times it was because I tried to do too much of it myself. I didn't talk to anyone. Uh, I sometimes tried tried free YouTube videos or I tried buying like a low ticket course and I sometimes ended up more frustrated than when I had started and usually the answer was to actually go and talk to someone who could tell me oh yeah all the stuff you're worried about don't worry about that but this other thing that you uh, missed here's me bringing it to your attention so such a good uh, just like thing that's that's hitting my head in, uh, right now is that sometimes just talking to the right person uh, helps blow through six months or more of frustration and sometimes saved a project that I otherwise would have given up on so talk to some of these experts talk to mr. Richard if you want to have an audiobook but you thought that it's either too expensive too hard or anything he will walk you through it so audiobookconsult.com and then rrvoice.com is the way that you can uh, find his blog find his book, find all that fun stuff, get an audiobook. You'll be glad you did it. Your business will be glad you did it. So make sure that you go to rrvoice.com and audiobookconsult.com. I want to thank you, Richard, for stopping by and telling us everything we need to know today about audiobooks. So thank you. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate it. Please subscribe, rate, and review our show at robertplank.com slash iTunes and like us on Facebook at robertplankshow.com.